Good day, everybody. Dr. Sai Josanyal, Professor Department Chair. This is going to be a demonstration of the wrist and the palm, especially the neuromuscular structures and some muscles. This is a supine cadaver, this is the left side. I'm standing on the left side, and the camera person is also on the left side. So we have dissected out this portion of the palm. So let's first identify the structures. We can see this tendon here. This is the flexor carpi radialis. In this particular cadaver, we don't have the palmaris longus. We see this tendon here. This is the flexor digitorum superficialis. And under that, we can see this is the flexor digitorum profundus. This is the flexor pollicis longus. This is the flexor carpi ulnaris. This is the radial artery. This is the median nerve. And further medially, we can see this is the ulnar artery and this is the ulnar nerve. The ulnar artery is lateral to the ulnar nerve. Both of these are located under the cover of the flexor carpi ulnaris and we have separated them out. Just like the radial artery is located under cover of the brachioradialis and we have separated them out. So let's take a look at some important landmarks and some important distributions. This place where my finger is located, this is called the carpal tunnel. The carpal tunnel is bounded by a tough ligamentous structure and we have already cut it here. This is the flexor retinaculum and if you look very closely and if we zoom the camera we can see that this is the cut edge of the flexor retinaculum on the radial side. And likewise we can see that this is the cut edge of the flexor retinaculum on the ulnar side. This is the cut edge on the other side. So therefore this was the bridge of the carpal tunnel and we have cut it. So one cut end is here, other cut end is here. And we have opened up the carpal tunnel. Passing through the carpal tunnel, we have the following structures. We have the median nerve, which we saw just now. Then we have the four tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis and the four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus. And we have the flexor pollicis longus. So therefore, nine tendons with their synovial sheets pass through the carpal tunnel and the median nerve is located in a very tight compartment where it can get compressed and that is known as the carpal tunnel syndrome. Now I'm going to put my finger deep inside and I put my finger in a space in the palm. This space is referred to as the mid palmar space. This space is deep to the central compartment of the palm and this is a potential space where if there's an infection pus can collect here and from here the infection can travel through the carpal tunnel as traced by my finger and it can come under the flexor digitum profundus, between the profundus and this muscle. This is the pronated, this is the pronated quadratus muscle. And this space is referred to as the space of Perona. And the pus can then track and stop here, where my finger is stopped, at the profundus. So this is the space of Perona, this is the carpal tunnel, this is the central compartment of the palm. That brings me to these bundle of muscles that we see here in the palm. This is the thenar muscles. They were covered by a fascia called the thenar fascia. And this is the hypothenar muscles, which is covered by a fascia called the hypothenar fascia. So therefore, these two are located in the thenar compartment and the hypothenar compartment. In the middle is an aponeurotic sheet, little bit of which is retained here, and that is known as the palmar aponeurosis. The proximal part of the palmar aponeurosis is attached to the flexor retinaculum, and the distal portion has got four slips, which fuse with the fibrous flexor sheets of the digits, and we have removed that. And under that, passes these four and four tendons of the flexor digitum superficialis and the profundus. The thenar muscles are, the outermost is the abductor pollicis brevis, then we have the opponent's pollicis, and deep is the flexor pollicis brevis. And the counterpart on the hypothenar side is the abductor digiti minimi, the opponent's digiti minimi, and the flexor digiti minimi brevis. This is supplied by the median nerve, this is supplied by the ulnar nerve. Now let's take a look at the course of the median nerve. The median nerve, after it has passed through the carpal tunnel, it enters the palm, and we can see it is giving the following branches. It gives a branch here. This is called the recurrent branch of the median nerve, which supplies the thenar muscles. Here, the recurrent branch is quite superficial, and if a person falls on his outstretched hand, and if he gets a superficial cut of the palm here, it can injure the superficial branch of the median nerve, the recurrent branch, and can produce paralysis of the thenar muscles. This is a picture of thenar paralysis showing what is known as the eight thumb deformity of the simian hand. 
Thereafter, we can see that the median nerve is giving these branches. These are the cutaneous branches, digital branches, to the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, and to the radial side of the little finger. That is one structure that we see here. We have already described the flexor digitorum profundus and the superficialis. Let's take a look at the flexor carpi ulnaris. We can see that it is stopping here. This bone is the pisiform bone. And from there, there's a tendon which runs and gets attached to the hook of hamate, and that is known as the pisohamid ligament. We notice that the ulnar artery and the ulnar nerve, they run superficial to the flexor retinaculum. And for that, I will again show you the flexor retinaculum more clearly. So we notice that the ulnar artery here and the ulnar nerve, they are located superficial to the flexor retinaculum. And I have lifted up the cut edge of the flexor retinaculum on the medial side. So therefore, these two structures do not get compressed in carpal tunnel syndrome, unlike the median nerve. And we see that the ulnar artery, it forms a superficial palmar arch. And from the superficial palmar arch, we have the common and the proper digital arteries. Let's take a look at the ulnar nerve itself. We can see that the ulnar nerve is giving a branch which goes posteriorly and supplies the hand on the ulnar one fourth on the dorsum of the hand. And then the main ulnar nerve goes superficial to the flexor retinaculum. Here it is located in a small tunnel called the Gion tunnel, which is bounded by the pisiform bone, the hook of hamate, the volar carpal ligament, which we can see here, and the pisohamate ligament. And after that, it comes into the palm, and we can see the course of the ulnar nerve in the palm. And here again, we can see, when I lift up the ulnar nerve, we can see it is giving branches to the ulnar side of the ring finger and the little finger. So this is the distribution of the ulnar nerve here. The ulnar nerve can be injured here in three different ways. One is known as the Guillaume Canal syndrome, and I mentioned the boundaries of the Guillaume Canal just now. The other is fracture of the hook of hamate. And the third condition is what is known as handlebar neuropathy. When a person is riding motorcycle for long duration, it presses on the ulnar nerve. In all these situations, the ulnar nerve will be injured. Ulnar nerve supplies the hypothenar muscles, which are shown here, which is actually the opponent's DGT minimi, abductor DGT minimi, and the flexor DGT minimi brevis. Additionally, the ulnar nerve supplies all the interosseous muscles, the dorsal, four dorsal, three palmar interosseous, and it also supplies the lumbrical muscles, the ulnar to lumbrical muscles. If the ulnar nerve is injured, it will produce claw hand. When the person is asked to straighten the hand, it becomes like this. This is called a radial claw hand. This is a picture of a radial claw hand, which typically occurs in proximal ulnar nerve injuries. In contrast, this is a picture of an ulnar claw hand, which typically occurs in distal ulnar nerve lesions. So this is the manifestation of ulnar nerve injury. The rule of thumb is, the median nerve supplies more of the skin. It supplies the lateral three-fourths of the palmar skin, the digital skin. And it supplies less of the muscle. It supplies only the thinner eminence. And it also supplies only the lateral two lobricles. Ulnar nerve supplies more of the muscles. It supplies muscles of the hypothenar eminence, all the seven interosseae, the medial two lobricles, and it supplies less of the skin. It supplies only the medial one-fourth of the palmar skin. So these are the structures which I wanted to show you extending from the palm to the wrist and distally and with the respective neurovascular distribution and the clinical correlations. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. Mr. Kenroll Cumberbatch is the camera person. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Have a nice day.